Mission trips can change people's lives in more ways than you know. After graduating college with plans to attend law school, Patton Ford went to Haiti for a mission trip where he was introduced to plumbing by a couple there. After returning, he chose trade school over law school. And now, he and all his crew at Ford Plumbing say they wish they'd known about plumbing earlier in life. I'm Craig Morgan, this is American Plumber Stories. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good, honest buck. No, it ain't love. I was taught to do the things I do so I don't depend on anyone. I work hard enough through the years so I play with YouTube, by the way, it's really, really cool, American Plumber Stories, and they were just in town shooting here in St. Louis. Normalize the idea of sending your kids to trade school, not dirty jobs, worthy jobs. One mistake a lot of people make when they're choosing a career path, that's very internally focused, like what am I good at? That's important. Uh, what's just as important is what does your community need? What does is, what is the world around you need? But there's not a need for it. Fortunately, you're not going to do it. These American Plumber Stories feature plumbers and up-and-comers all over the United States. Joining us in the studios now, Patton Ford, the owner of Ford Plumbing and Gas, recently featured in American Plumber Stories. When Patton was growing up, he's perfect. I know, I know, um, that's a mother statement, but he was always a straight-A student. He always desired to do well in life. Patton always knew he would make something of himself. I'm from Ridgeland, the city of Ridgeland, which is in uh, the heart of Madison County, Mississippi. Went to high school in Ridgeland, to a private high school in Ridgeland, St. Andrews Episcopal School. Focused a lot on the liberal arts and preparing you for college. When I was in high school, like, I was like, Dad, what if I did this? And, you know, they didn't require a college degree. And uh, his answer was always like, no, you're going to go to college. As a high schooler, my husband and I would be interested in him going to work with an attorney or a doctor or a lawyer because we wanted him to understand what those jobs look like. You know, there was a time where I went through a really trying to consider whether or not that was what I wanted to do right out of high school. And they made it clear that it was, I was that's what I was going to do. You know, you're going to go to college. That's what, that's what you do next. Um, it's almost like you're setting yourself up for failure if you don't. I went to the University of Mississippi, went to Ole Miss, and graduated with a degree in English and a minor in business. Between undergrad and law school, uh, I had the opportunity to go on a mission trip down to Haiti. I just needed that time to kind of breathe and really consider what the Lord's plan for my life was and what I was going to do as a vocation. While he was in Haiti, he met a couple that was there for two weeks to help plumb a Hope Center there in Galatian Bon. Mike and Jan Kenny, and they had a small plumbing company in Jackson. They were doing some plumbing work down in Haiti. They were putting in plumbing for a new facility that they were building. I had the opportunity to kind of go and help them for a couple of days. I remember in Haiti, they all burned their trash. Out of all the things, all the needs in Haiti and all the different problems in the government and, and child poverty and all this, something about that really stuck out to me. Waste management began to be something that was at the top of my mind. I remember emailing my dad saying, I don't know about this dad, but for some reason, the idea of waste management is just is just sticking with me like nothing else is down here. You know, plumbing in a very real sense is, is waste management. When I moved back, I was really battling with whether or not I should do plumbing or not, and I drove by the Heinz campus in Pearl, and then on the big flashing light it said, sign up for plumbing classes today. And I'm like, well, that's there's a sign, literally a, a very clear sign that, that I've been looking for, this is something I should do or not. Mike and Jan Kenny, uh, 
they changed the trajectory of both my son's lives. What they had going on was, was something that I felt like was not only needed, but something that I could I might could try out, you know, and I, and I talked to them a lot and asked them if they'd ever be interested in letting a guy like me come and kind of shadow them and watch them and watch what they do. And when I got back from Haiti, you know, sure enough, they agreed to let me come work with them. Next thing I knew, instead of going to law school, I was going to plumbing school at night and working for them during the day. So when Patton went to Haiti and he came home at Christmas, I'll never forget it, and he told my husband and I, y'all sit down, I have something to tell you. My first thought was he was he wanted to go to the mission field. He didn't want to come back and go to law school like he had told us he was going to do. But he said, I want to be a plumber. And I didn't see it coming at all. It was so totally out of left field. It was actually a gut punch. Yeah, it was it was it was not at all, you know, the shock. Not what we expected at all. I just remember him saying, you know, plumbers make a lot of money. You know, like that you can do well and I was like, yeah. But you were, you know, thinking you're about to go to be a lawyer. You know, obviously, the lawyers make a ton of money, but I think when you really look at it, it's like, yeah, well, some of them do. You got to go to do a ton of school and you got to bust your butt. Same as any other job. Plumbing, you know, you can learn it, do it. It's a lot more freedom. You know, going down the path of getting into plumbing, um, I wouldn't say my dad had as much of an issue with it as, as my mom. Uh, she definitely was, was resistant. Uh, not, not fiercely resistant or overtly resistant, but there was definitely a number of questions she had um, in trying to get to the bottom of what, you know, what was going on in my head. The first thought I had was, how much money have we spent on his education? He went to parochial school from pre-K to 12th grade and then college for four years. Surely he wants to do something more with his life than being a plumber. Patton's daddy was way more understanding than me. I'm just being honest with you, I, my pride was truly crushed when I heard him say those words. He had always made wise decisions, so I knew that there was something in there that made him want to do this. It took me probably several months to get past the pride that I had in telling people he was going to be an attorney. I would tell them that he had chosen not to go to law school, but I couldn't tell him he's chosen to be a plumber. Looking back on the decision that he made, I had no idea he could be as wise as he was at that moment in his life. You know, this is really cool because this is my home. Not only is my home state, this is my home city where I live. And I've been hearing about Ford Plumbing ever since we launched American Plumber Stories. I had people come up to me, you got to talk to Patton Ford. You got to, people would call me and I'm like, who's this Patton guy, you know, constantly. And so finally here, we're in the last episode of season two and we're here. But what, what I found unique about you all is that, you, you know your average age at this company? 25. Right at 26. You all are the younger generation, kind of the ones that we're trying to make this show for. And you're doing this. You're doing. We've been all over this country, and we haven't seen a company this young. Why do you, why do you guys think that that 25-year-old and under generation is not doing what you guys are doing? Whenever I was in high school, it wasn't, you know, it was college really was your only option, you know, if, if um it if wasn't, you wanted a career. Yeah, if you wanted a career, it seemed like you're, the, what you do after high school, uh, the mold was cut as such that you go to high school, you go to college, and then you have a career. Um, and that worked really well for the generations before us, but as the market got saturated with people, there is now a much greater need for people who don't go to school for half their life, you know. But just to know that plumbing is an, is an option, is a job. I mean, I guess when you're a kid, you just think, oh, that you're just a plumber. That's not really a career. Yeah. You know, it's just a, that's just what you are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily, you don't necessarily have anything valuable to offer that you're just a plumber, you know. And just to know, for kids to know that, no, that is a whole career that you can go into not only just plumbing but you can go into plumbing and then go into a lot of things just within it's the a plumbing vast career. industry I mean, yeah yeah it took us a long time to get to the point where we are now in the industry and i don't think there's going to be an overnight fix 
you can't put the ball on one person's court, whether it's schools or parents or society in general. And we're starting to kind of feel the effects of the, the, the shortage. But I do think it's going to take a while for us to get back to a, a healthy number of plumbers in the, in the industry. So yeah, that's, that's the one thing I would say is it's a complex issue and it's going to take complex solutions. One thing they do in Philadelphia is you get to pick your high school. you got to qualify for it, but if you want to get into more of a trade, you've had that experience early on to know this is the high school I want to go to. As this program has grown, the community and the parents, they are wanting their kids to do this now. And I think that's what our state needs to do, get a plumbing yeah. program, or it doesn't even have to be plumbing, it be any trade. Mm -hmm. It'll catch on. I think, uh, to your point, it's going to take everyone. In the same way that Patton and his crew speak about wishing they had been introduced to plumbing earlier on in life, there's a school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania that's doing just that. I love the trades. Like for me, I get here every morning with the building engineer. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna give you 110%. I'm not gonna half-ass it, I'm gonna give you 110%. That's what I think we need. Yeah, this is the first building trades program in the Philadelphia School District. The grades we teach here are fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. The trades are done a certain way. You can't do it your way, it's done a certain way. So in my classroom, we do it my way. This is Castle Jared, we do everything my way. Nope, I want Emily and Chad. He was just a rock star, we could tell right from the beginning. And he just had that technical knowledge of the trades, but he also had practical application of how do we take literacy and math skills and apply them into this hands-on environment. Safety, so you know, if you got long sleeves on, what you gotta do with your sleeves? To so where? Above your elbow, okay. Make sure you don't have no strings on. This is what we're gonna do today. I want y'all to cut six inches of copper pipe, okay? My favorite thing would probably be plumbing. Like, I liked using the PEX pipes and all of that. This is like my first time ever being in any type of class like this. My old school, we didn't have any programs like this or anything, so it's really fun doing this. Y'all can use mat gas. Remember, do not burn the flux. When the pipe looks ready, go ahead and do it. You also have to wipe your joints. This is what it's like to be in a, a highly lucrative field, such as an electrician or a plumber or HVAC technician or a carpenter. You have to move the fire, move the propane. The principal, I call him the Phil Jackson. I'm just Michael Jordan. He Phil Jackson. He's the triangle, the king of the triangle offense. He gives me that, that flexibility and their trust with what I'm going to do and it's like for the best for the students, what's best for the students. Even after class people are still talking about it and they have more attention to everything else. I don't have this class anymore but sometimes I ask my teachers to go to this class because it's just fun. It's a mindset shift. We have to make the trades cool. How long is your apprenticeship? How many hours? Just so the students would know. It's a five-year apprenticeship. Uh, it, don't quote me on the hours, okay. but it's, it's, it's about eight, eight hours a day, five days a week okay. for five oh. years to see a Eight hours a day. Eight hours a day. You know we work together. We have to have our kids understand and our families understand that this is a lucrative, high-paying, respectable field that we need good, quality people in in order to build our country. Back in the day, they were pushing college, 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 but you go to college, you get debt and you don't even know what you're going to do with your life. Um, so you, now you have debt that you have to pay off and you're stuck. CTE programs in school were commonplace in the 1950s, 1960s, and then you know, 1970, 1980, 1990, for whatever reason, we started pulling them out of schools. It's one of the worst decisions I think we've made as a country. Back in the day, I used to go to shop class. We had shop class. We need to get back to that. I might do real estate. I might fix up the house. I might buy a like, $50,000 house. Like work, work on it, and then sell it for like 150. Yesterday, my mom had like something like she couldn't fix the toilet, and then Mr. Jared told me something about it, and I was like, I was helping her, and then it worked. Did you charge it for it? Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's not two separate things. The, our career and technical education program does not operate completely independent from the academic component. We need to bring those two together. Once that happens and we build momentum. If the students don't like you, they won't learn from you. So you have to actually build that environment, that culture where they feel safe. I just want the kids to actually get tools in their hand. I think he's a pretty awesome teacher. Typically when somebody is in a job that they enjoy to do, 
they're usually enthusiastic. He's one of my favorite teachers that I've actually ever had. It's my favorite class out of all of them. And we have kids that are excited about plumbing and excited about electrical um, work and excited about HVAC. This is the hottest thing in our school right now. Every day we get kids, adults, parents saying, how do I get my child into this class? And the thing is, our country needs a lot more plumbers. We need trades everywhere. And I think y'all are learning all the trades. With Fister, with our faucets, we have relationships with plumbers because they install our plumbing. And a lot of them, they need a lot of help. They don't, they, they don't know where the next generation of plumbing is coming from because not a lot of people maybe want to get into that or they don't know about it. So when I find about the class that y'all are doing and what Mr. Derrick's doing, what y'all school's doing, I was like, we got to show the country this class. This is awesome. Because not a lot of schools are doing what y'all are doing. The sky's the limit. Um, I would love to expand this program further and make sure that um, as many kids that are interested and want to try to dabble in the trades have that opportunity to do so before they make life-changing decisions when they get into high school and beyond. Here you get to actually do stuff, like fun stuff. It makes students want to go to school because usually people are like, oh, I gotta go to school, I don't really wanna go. I'm just trying to give back to the teachers that invested in me. This is my give back to them saying thanks. I couldn't learn from anyone else but the best, Mr. Jarrett. We're kind of getting low on people going into the trades, you know, a lot of people wanting to go be doctors and lawyers, not that there's anything wrong with that. We need doctors and lawyers. Uh, we need people working in offices and doing a good quality job there, but we don't need too many people going in that direction. It didn't just happen overnight. Over the course of a couple of graduating classes, this ha happened over the course of a generation where it just became not a, an option that people talked about. We could hire a lot of more people and still stay plenty busy. It's just finding the right folks. First and foremost, I think we have to lose the stigma of a plumber. I think it's very important that our state recognizes that there is a need for this trade. Uh, right now, the state of Mississippi legislature is going to increase their workforce development budget from $5 million to $15 million. Accelerate is the program that we're working with right now. We're changing our laws. We realize that plumber might not have a four-year degree. The law that's on the books now requires a teaching license and the only way to get that is by a four-year degree. So we're changing that to make it an experience-based requirement. And so we're gonna have experienced plumbers teaching our kids at night class at our community colleges. But we really need to start programs in middle school. They can have hands-on in middle school so they can see that this is an option. My sons didn't even know this was an option until he went to Haiti and realized that there, there was something more to his life than just another three years of school. You know, people tell you all the time, don't work with family, don't go into business with family. It's like you know, the cardinal sin. If you want to ruin a business, you know, get family members involved. I think because we're kind of different, our strengths complement each other well. Crockett's not afraid to, to call me out on something when I need to be called out, and I try to take constructive criticism well. When, when we have you know new guys that come and work with us, Crockett's a guy who I feel confident about sending new employees. They can go ride with Crockett. I'm 100% confident that they're going to get exposed to the right way of doing things. It takes a big load off off of my shoulders, you know. There's a lot of freedom. It, it's just us, just five of us, uh, very much like a family. Uh, well, with me and Pat and our brothers, but it, all of us, you know, it's, we all feel like we're family. So. My husband says he wants to retire from his full-time job and go to work with his boys because he sees how much fun they're plumbers and they are owning their profession. Both of them being plumbers, I couldn't be more proud of them. We never stop being yeah, brothers. I mean, at the end of the day, you're still brothers. So, what's you your, know, what's your, how's your mom feel about y'all working together? Oh, she's, she loves happiest it. lady in the world. Yeah, happiest mama. I couldn't be more proud of both my sons. Patton, of course, it was his idea to become a plumber. And then Crockett was at college as well, and he saw Patton really loving what he was doing. Then leaves college, comes home, and goes to night class and works for Jan and Mike during the day as well. They trained both our sons to be plumbers. Mike and Jan Kenny are the 
really the people you need to be interviewing. I mean, that man is just, he's interested in this younger generation, and that's what we've got to have. We've got to change the stigma of a plumber from a lesser career choice to a wiser career choice. They told me what it was all about. I worked with them a little bit, and there was just something. I, I really feel like it was the Lord laying upon my heart, like this is the direction you needed to go in. If you were to look at it on the surface, it probably wouldn't have made a lot of sense, but it, may, it was just a clear, the, my next set of mentors uh, for my career, whatever that might look like. He really overcame my short-sightedness. He really did, and I'm very thankful that he, um, he pursued his dream and he knew that it was not necessarily something that his mama would have wanted him to do, but I couldn't be more proud of him now. I'm Patton Ford and I'm an American plumber. <laughs>